Hi everyone, and welcome back to another video in the Introduction to Windows Forensics series. This time we're going to talk about Log Parser. This free tool from Microsoft allows us to query numerous text-based data sources such as log files, CSV files, XML files, and other sources including Active Directory and the Windows Registry. In this video, we're going to take a look at how Log Parser can allow us to query numerous Windows EVTX event logs using SQL queries. That's right, Log Parser's magic is the ability to allow us to use SQL to query all of these data types. Now I know what you're thinking, why would we want to do this? After all, we have Event Viewer on Windows, which is somewhat capable, and excellent third-party tools such as Event Log Explorer that provide GUI-based interfaces with which we can query Windows log files. The answer is scalability. Suppose you have hundreds or even thousands of log files from numerous systems and you need to bulk search all of those logs looking for a particular indicator of compromise, such as an IP address or a username. Or maybe you want to search for a particular Windows event ID across those numerous logs. That's where Log Parser shines. Unfortunately though, the syntax can be a bit complex and it does take some getting used to. In fact, part of the reason we don't see more widespread use of the tool in the forensic community is probably because people tend to fear SQL queries, as well as the command line. There are numerous GUI front ends for the tool, and one of the more popular is Log Parser Lizard, as you see here. Now that's beyond the scope of this video because we're going to concentrate on the core command line tool, but if there is interest, I may make a future video covering Log Parser Lizard. There is a free version of the software available, as well as paid versions, and it is one of the most well-respected GUI front ends for Log Parser. For those interested, I'll go ahead and include a link to the tool in this video's description. In the next part of the video, we're going to take a look at an example Log Parser query and dissect it one parameter at a time. And then we'll practice log parser queries against numerous logs I've gathered from Windows 10, Server 2012 R2, and Server 2016 lab machines. So let's get started. Okay, let's take a look at some example log parser queries. You can see that I have a command prompt pulled up and I'm currently in the logs directory, which is on my desktop. Within this directory, I've got three subdirectories entitled 10, 2012R2, and 2016, which, as you might guess, corresponds to logs from those three different operating systems. If I recursively search for security.evtx, you'll notice we do have three different security.evtx files. Let's go ahead and change into the Windows 10 log directory, and we'll go ahead and take a look at an example query. Now, in the interest of not making any typos while recording this, I'm going to cheat a little bit and copy and paste this, but don't worry, we're going to go over every single parameter and explain what it does. Now, the first search will be searching for a particular Windows event ID. In this case, it's 4624, which you may recognize as a successful account logon. So this query will enable us to search any particular log file for any particular Windows event ID. And if we take a look at this page from Microsoft entitled Events to Monitor, which I'll include a link to in the video's description, we have numerous event IDs that Microsoft recommends monitoring in a given environment. And of course, if we search for 4624, it is here and corresponds to an account was successfully logged on. 4625 is an account failed to log on and 4634 is an account was logged off. Of course, these are very common events that we'll find in security.evtx, and there are numerous other events in various log files that we may be interested in taking a look at. So again, this query will come in quite handy. So let's go ahead and minimize this, and let's break the query down step by step. First off, we're actually calling the log parser executable by specifying the full path. On a 64-bit Windows system, that will be in Program Files x86, log parser 2.2, which is the current version, and then the executable is simply log parser.exe. Dash stats colon off will actually disable some statistics that will be otherwise provided to us by default. In the interest of providing some clean output, we'll go ahead and turn that off. The dash i will actually specify the type of data 
that we are actually searching. In this case, it's EVT files, technically EVTX, but the parameter is simply EVT. And then starting with a quote, we have what should look very familiar to you because it's pretty much a SQL query. We've got select star from the name of the file, where event ID equals, and then the event ID. And again, in this case, it's 4624. So if we copy this and go ahead and paste it here, you'll notice that we have quite a bit of output. Now, obviously this is hard to read looking at it in this format, but we can easily redirect this to a file. Now you'll notice after each page of output, we get the press a key prompt here, and I'm simply hitting the space bar to continue to the next page. I'll go ahead and break out of this with control C. Now, if we wanted to redirect this to a file, you might think we could simply do this and redirect to out.csv, and you would almost be right, except that notice it seems to hang right here. And that's because it's expecting us to press a key. So we'll want to change one parameter here and add a dash Q colon on to specify quiet mode. That way we won't get that press a key prompt. And if we do that, you'll notice it returns us to the prompt immediately and it's already written the file. So if we take a look at that file, it's right here and we can simply open it with Microsoft Excel. Now, one thing to note is that if we scroll over here, you'll notice that the data is actually delimited with pipes. So what we can do is actually go and highlight this first column and go to data and then go over to text to columns. We'll choose delimited. We'll go ahead and uncheck tab, choose other and type in the pipe symbol. And now we have the output in a more readable format. And if we scroll across here, we can actually see the machine name, the domain or work group, the SID, and various other information that is present within the log file. This is the same information that you would see looking at it in Windows Event Viewer or Event Log Explorer. So again, it's just that simple. Let's go ahead and quit Excel and take a look at the query one more time. And we can arbitrarily replace this with any Windows event ID. For example, we could do a 4634 to look for log off events or any other Windows event ID that we saw on that page. When we do this, you'll notice we get output here showing additional information for 4634 events. So that's a very easy query and the syntax is pretty straightforward. Now let's take a look at logins grouped by user ID. This is a good query because it enables us to very quickly get a rundown of the number of logins for any given username on a system. So again, we're specifying the full path of the executable, turning off stats, specifying the EVT format. And then the SQL syntax is a little bit more complex here. We've actually got some tokens that we're extracting and these correspond to the location in the actual event log where we would find these fields. So we're actually selecting this as username and then we're actually performing a count and we're selecting it from the security EVTX file. Again, we're searching for event ID 4624 and we're excluding system, anonymous logon, local service, network service, and then we're going ahead and ordering it by count descending. So let's go ahead and copy this and take a look at the output. And you can see that we get a nice breakdown of the number of logons associated with these user IDs. And again, they are in descending order. So at the top here, we have my user account with a count of 74. So again, this might be a very useful query. Next, we can actually search for logs for a specific user. So here, we might actually want to know, in this case, the username administrator and all the logs associated with that particular user account within the security.evtx file. And again, the syntax does look a little bit complicated, but all we're doing here is specifying the different fields within the event log file where we would find these particular uh, values, such as username, domain, and various things of this nature. 
Now, in a few minutes, I will actually show you a wonderful resource that someone created on GitHub that will break these down for you and provide a huge number of recipes because really the sky's the limit here. We could literally search for just about anything within the event logs. And the syntax can be quite simple as in our first example or more complex like this. You certainly don't have to memorize it or remember which field is in which position, but once you have these recipes, you could simply save them and cut and paste the queries when you're performing an investigation. Let's go ahead and grab this one. And if we paste it, we'll go ahead and change administrator to my user account. And if we run this, you'll notice we get a nice clean output that shows us date and timestamps, usernames, domains, even logon types, which is very handy. If you're not familiar with this, there's plenty of information out there that shows you which particular logon type corresponds to which event. For example, is it a local console login, a network login, an RDP login, etc. We get the name of the workstation, the process name, and even the source IP address, which will be very handy for remote events, for example. So again, this is a very useful query here. And we can even search for logs from a specific IP address. So again, this query is a little long, but you'll notice at the very end, we're saying and source IP equals XXXX, where we would put the IPv4 address. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So for the IP address, since we're dealing with local events here, I'm just going to specify localhost. And you can see here that we immediately get results and we can see activity associated with 127.001. Now, of course, in a real investigation, we may want to look for events associated with an IP address that may be part of an IOC that we were looking at or other IP addresses of interest. But you can see this would be a very useful query. So next, what we're going to do is look at a way that we can scale these queries because you'll notice that everything I just did, I did within a single directory of logs. If we move up a directory, we of course have two other directories with logs, 2012 R2 and 2016. And while it may not seem that big of a deal to simply change into those directories and repeat the same queries, what if we had, instead of three, 300 directories filled with hundreds of logs and we wanted to search across all of those logs for a particular IP address or a username or an event ID? Well, certainly we wouldn't want to manually change into each directory. And if you're thinking there must be a better way to do it, you're absolutely right, there is. So in the next section of the video, we'll actually go ahead and take a look at how we can leverage PowerShell in combination with Log Parser to recurse through all of these log files and provide us with the output that we're looking for. So let's go ahead and take a look at that next. Okay, in a normal Windows command prompt, if we wanted to recursively list all of the files, we could simply type dir slash s and we'll get the output. In PowerShell, however, that doesn't work. Now, dir works simply because it is aliased to git-child-item, which is what we're going to actually be using. Turns out that if we type git-child-item-recurse, that is going to be equivalent to dir slash s in the normal command prompt. So if we switch over to our notepad, you'll notice that we are running git-child-item-recurse, and we're piping that through where name equals security.evtx. Of course, we could change this to any particular evtx file or all evtx files. And then for each, which is the same thing as a percent, we're changing into the directory, printing the path, and then starting here, we're simply running a normal query, just like we did in our first example. We're calling logparser.exe, turning stats off, specifying evt for the type, quiet mode is on in this case, and then select star from security.evtx where event ID equals 4624, which is again a successful account logon. So let's go ahead and copy this. And then in our logs directory, we'll go ahead and paste this and see what output we get. And it appears to have worked. And as you can see here, 
we see logs from x-server2016, and in fact, we are now in the 2016 directory. So it did apparently recurse through and parsed this particular security.evtx file, as well as the security.evtx file within our 2012 R2 directory and our Windows 10 directory. So that's pretty straightforward. Again, we're using the pipelining features of PowerShell to take the output of one command and send it to another. Now in the second example, it's a little bit more complicated. We're running the same get child item dash recurse where name equals security.evtx and then for each and then here begins the log parser query. So in this case, we're actually looking for a particular source IP address, which we did in one of our previous examples, except that we're doing so across all of the security.evtx files. So let's go ahead and copy this and we'll go ahead and change the IP address here to 127.0.0.1, just to give us some data. And you can see that we do indeed have output. And as I continue to page through here, you'll notice that we have some logs from X server 2012 R2 and X server 2016, in addition to the Praxis VM, which is our Windows 10 box. So that does appear to have recursed through all three directories and search for events within all three of our security.evtx files. And of course, this scales wonderfully well. In fact, I used this in a recent investigation or hundreds of computers. Now, as promised, let me show you this particular GitHub gist. This particular user put this together, and if we scroll down through here, you'll notice dozens and dozens and dozens of examples. Group by logon type, group by workstation name, process name, finding a specific IP address, finding user log off events, grouped by user account, admin logons. We're not even halfway through. User account was changed. User account was locked out. Just tons and tons of examples here of things that you could search for with log parser. So I'll include a link to this in the video's description and I would highly encourage you to grab this because there are some fantastic examples here. In fact, some of the examples I used came from this particular page starting with find event ID, which is the first thing we looked at. So definitely take a look at this. The sky's the limit. We can literally use log parser to query just about anything with standard SQL syntax within any of our event files. And don't forget that of course, log parser goes far beyond Windows event files. We're specifically concentrating on that in this video, but this is an extremely powerful tool. It's been around for quite a while, as I mentioned, and not a lot of people seem to know about it in the forensic community, at least not in my experience. But this is something you should definitely take a look at. Now, as I also mentioned in the beginning of the video, there are some GUI front ends, including Log Parser Lizard. And if there's interest, depending on how well this is received, I may actually cover some of those GUI tools as well. But even without a GUI, if you'll take some of these recipes, as I'll call them, and save them out as just simple text files, it's quite easy to copy and paste this and use them in your investigations. And I would highly encourage you to take a look at that and, and do so because while you could use Windows Event Viewer or some sort of other third-party utility to parse the logs, like I mentioned, Event Log Explorer, for example, it's just not as scalable or as quick as you could accomplish using Log Parser. So as always, I would like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I hope this has been informative for you. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it if you would. And please also feel free to comment, like, share, and all of that other good stuff that I'm supposed to say at the end of each video. And I will see you in the next video.